بيان صادر عن القوات المسلحة اليمنية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم صدق الله العظيم انتصارا للشعبين الفلسطيني واللبناني ودعما للمقاومتين الباسلتين الفلسطينية واللبنانية استهدف سلاح الجو المسير في القوات المسلحة اليمنية Yemen's recent declaration of war on civilian targets in Israel is a serious shift in their conflict, bringing the stakes even higher. This announcement came after Israel carried out airstrikes on civilian infrastructure in Yemen, including the key port of Hodaida and a power station. وقد حققت العمليتان بعون الله تعالى أهدافهما بنجاح تحيي القوات المسلحة اليمنية كافة المجاهدين الصامدين في فلسطين ولبنان لدفاعهم عن الأمة وهي تواجه العدوان الإسرائيلي الأمريكي ومخططاته الهادفة إلى إخضاع كافة البلدان والشعوب وتؤكد وقوفها العملي إلى جانب الشعبين الفلسطيني واللبناني حتى دحر العدوان وإفشال مخططاته الإجرامية ومؤامراته التوسعية وتهيب القوات المسلحة اليمنية بكافة الشعوب العربية والإسلامية إلى الخروج من حالة الصمت والمشاركة الفاعلة في هذه المعركة المصيرية ونحن في الذكرى الأولى لانطلاقتها المباركة وهي مستمرة بعون الله تعالى حتى تحقيق النصر الموعود والله حسبنا ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير عاش اليمن حرا عزيزا مستقلا والنصر لليمن ولكل أحرار الأمة صنعاء الثامن والعشرين من ربيع الأول 1446 للهجرة الموافق للأول من أكتوبر 2024 صادر Yemen is responding by saying that if Israel targets civilians, then Yemen will do the same, marking a dangerous new phase in their war. When Yemen's military leaders said, striking civilian targets will be met with civilian targets, they were making it clear that their retaliation is going to be direct. This isn't just about military bases or soldiers. It's about civilian infrastructure, the kind of places where regular people work and live. And they're warning Israel that they have a long list of targets inside Israel that they can hit, which they've probably been studying for a while. Now, why are civilian targets so important in this situation? Well, when Israel struck Yemen's civilian infrastructure, like the port of Hodeida and the power station, they weren't just damaging buildings, they were hitting Yemen's economy and the daily lives of its people. These places are crucial for keeping the country running. Hodeida is one of the main ports that brings in fuel and supplies, which is essential for a country already struggling with war. The power station provides electricity for homes and businesses, and without it, life becomes even harder. By targeting these sites, Israel was likely trying to weaken Yemen's ability to function and sustain itself during the conflict. But Yemen isn't taking it lightly. They're saying, if you hit our civilians, we'll hit yours, aiming to show Israel that they won't back down, even if the stakes are high. Yemen's military officials also mentioned that they have a large target bank inside Israel. This means they've identified important places in Israel they could strike, possibly infrastructure like energy facilities, transport systems, or even residential areas. And they're ready to use this information if they need to. Yemen's message is that they're prepared for a long fight, and they won't be easily intimidated by Israeli airstrikes. Now, there's another important angle here. Yemen is accusing the United States of giving Israel the green light to attack. This isn't just about Israel versus Yemen. Yemen sees the US as playing a big role in supporting Israeli military actions. For Yemen and many other groups in the region, Israel is closely tied to American interests. So by targeting Israel, they also see themselves as standing up to US influence in the Middle East. When Yemeni officials said Israel is in ecstasy, they're suggesting that Israel might feel overly confident in its military strength, thanks to American support. But Yemen's warning is that this confidence might backfire. They believe that Israel is overstepping and that there will be consequences for these attacks. So 
What does all this mean moving forward? Yemen's threats to strike civilian targets in Israel could escalate the conflict in a big way. If Yemen follows through, Israel is almost certainly going to respond with even more force, trying to prevent Yemen from being able to launch further attacks. But Yemen's statements indicate that they've got enough military resources to fight back, no matter what Israel does. This also raises the possibility that the conflict could spread beyond just Yemen and Israel. Yemen has allies in the region who share its anti-Israel stance, like Hezbollah in Lebanon. If things escalate further, we could see other groups getting involved, which would make the situation even more volatile. Plus, with the US already being accused of backing Israel, the conflict could draw in even more international players. The recent Israeli airstrikes on Yemen, particularly on the oil storage facility in Rasisa and the power stations in Al-Hali and Ras Kathib, are part of a much more complex game of military strategy than just destroying infrastructure. While these attacks caused physical damage, they also revealed a deeper layer of psychological warfare between Israel and the Yemeni resistance, led by Ansarullah. Yemen actually pulled a clever move in this situation. Before Israel's strikes, they emptied the fuel storage facilities at Ras Issa and other critical locations. This meant that when Israel hit those targets, the damage was largely symbolic. Yes, infrastructure was destroyed, but the immediate impact that Israel probably hoped for, crippling Yemen's fuel supply, was avoided. This tactic saved Yemen valuable resources and also highlighted a weakness in Israel's intelligence or strategy. The Israeli military misjudged what they were attacking, which is a win for Yemen on the psychological front. Now, let's talk about why these facilities matter so much. The port of Rasisa is one of Yemen's main oil terminals, making it vital for the country's energy supply. Yemen, already dealing with the aftermath of years of war, relies heavily on these facilities to keep its economy running and to support basic daily life. So, by anticipating the Israeli attack and taking precautions, Yemen showed they were thinking ahead, strategically planning to minimise damage. Oil storage tanks like those in Rasisa are more than just storage units. They're crucial to keeping the country functioning. In a war-torn nation like Yemen, fuel powers everything from homes to military operations. When Israel targeted these sites, they likely hoped to cut off Yemen's ability to operate, both militarily and economically. But Yemen's decision to empty the tanks shows just how adaptable their resistance is. They found a way to avoid the worst of the damage, even when faced with an overwhelming military force. Even though the tanks were emptied, the destruction still carries weight. These facilities were old and outdated, so replacing them isn't going to be easy. With Yemen already struggling due to a severe humanitarian crisis and economic hardships, rebuilding will be slow and expensive. This leaves Yemen more vulnerable to future attacks, since it won't be able to quickly replace what was lost. It also means Israel or other forces might target other key infrastructure in the future. Looking at the bigger picture, Israel's focus on hitting civilian infrastructure is not new. Many modern military powers, including Israel, justify attacks on things like fuel tanks and power stations by saying they serve both military and civilian purposes. But in this case, with the tanks being empty, it seems like the goal was more about creating fear and breaking civilian morale. Israel has used similar tactics in places like Gaza and Lebanon, aiming to make life harder for civilians in order to pressure their governments or resistance movements. Despite these tactics, the Yemeni resistance isn't backing down. Nasreddin Amer, a senior figure in the Ansarullah Media Organization, made it clear that this aggression won't stop Yemen from pursuing its goals. In fact, the attack seems to have strengthened their resolve. Yemen sees itself as part of a larger regional movement resisting Israeli and Western influence, alongside groups like Hezbollah. So, rather than being intimidated, they are doubling down on their support for Palestine and other regional causes. The conflict between Israel and Yemen isn't just about these two countries, though. It's tied to a broader geopolitical struggle between Israel and various resistance groups in the Middle East. Israel's attack on the oil infrastructure in Hodeida is part of an effort to weaken the military capabilities of its adversaries by going after their economic lifelines. However, Yemen's ability to foresee and counter this move shows that even smaller nations 
can outsmart more powerful opponents with the right strategy. Yemen's vow to retaliate opens the door to further escalation. While Yemen may not be able to take on Israel directly in a traditional military sense, they have other tools at their disposal. They can rely on their alliances with groups like Hezbollah and take advantage of their strategic location near key maritime routes like the Red Sea. If Yemen coordinates attacks on Israeli interests in the region, it could easily spiral into a larger conflict, bringing in more players and making the situation even more unstable. On top of everything else, these airstrikes have serious consequences for Yemen's already dire domestic situation. The Yemeni Health Ministry reported that four people were killed and 29 were injured in the attack. These casualties are just adding to the toll of Yemen's ongoing civil war and worsening the humanitarian crisis. Targeting civilian infrastructure during such a crisis shows a complete disregard for human life.